once again, this, uh, this may come as a little bit of a surprise, but we're going to talk about John the Baptist this morning. Just in case you, you hadn't caught on to that yet, uh, the title of our sermon this morning, especially if you're following along with your sermon notes, is Look, the Lamb of God. And our text comes to us from the first chapter of John. I'll go ahead and read that for you now. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Okay, we'll go with that. That works for our text this morning, so... Today's text actually spells the end of John the Baptist's place in God's plan of salvation. Now, John did have a very special job, and his job was to introduce the world to his Savior. Now, in our reading, John does that not once, but twice. John takes two opportunities to point out Christ and to boldly tell the world exactly whom it was that they were looking at. Now, if you just superficially read this text, you might think that that's all that there is here. John identifies Jesus as the Lamb of God, end of story. But that's not true. There are some very important things in this reading that we don't want to miss. So today we're going to look at four points that will help us grow as followers of that Lamb. Our first point deals specifically with John the Baptist. This is a lesson that all of us need to hear and to rehear often. The lesson that John the Baptist gives us is so relevant today that we've actually coined a phrase to identify it. Have you ever heard the phrase, it's all about me? That seems to be the uh, battle cry of our generation today. It's all about me. But John the Baptist knew that that wasn't true. The question is, do we know that that's not true? Let's see if this sounds familiar. When I was about 15, it seemed like the whole world revolved around me. Not too much different from a baby, actually. Somehow... Almost every conversation seemed to criticize me or to measure me or to affirm me. Now, one day I barged right into the middle of a conversation thinking that the talk was all about me. I'll never forget my father saying, I'm only going to tell you this one time. This is not about you. Okay, actually, he probably told me that about a hundred more times. But he was right. And John the Baptist understood that. This is not about me. It's all about Christ. But again, do we understand that? One of the real roadblocks to a bold Christian witness comes as we Christians focus so much on our fears, our inadequacies, our schedules, our need for acceptance and approval, that it all ends up being more about us than it is about Christ. Again, we need to hear my Father's words. This is not about you. We need to learn what John the Baptist knew. It's not about you or me. It's all about Christ. Now let's look at two things about this Lamb of God that John introduces. First, what has the Lamb of God done? Well, as we hear John say, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But to understand the impact of those words, we need to do a short Greek word study here. 
the verb that we translate as take away can have two meanings, and both of them actually apply. The verb can mean to pick up and carry, which is what Jesus does to us as a substitutionary sacrifice. In 2 Corinthians, we read, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So the Lamb of God picks up our burden of sin, and he carries it for us. But the other meaning of takes away is to carry off. When we think about that Lamb of God carrying our sin, it means that he's also removed that guilt and punishment for our sin. When Jesus took our sin, he also took the guilt and the punishment that were rightfully ours. So because of Christ, we can stand confidently in the presence of God. The Apostle John writes in his first epistle, He is the atoning sacrifice for our sin. Now that supreme atonement means it's as though our sin never existed. Now the second thing that Jesus has done as that Lamb of God comes in John the Baptist's little riddle. Verse 30, John says, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Now, this isn't John's attempt to dabble in double talk here. What we have here is actually a very precisely worded sentence that says that Jesus is more than just an ordinary man. Look carefully at what John is saying. A man who was born after I was born is more important than me because he existed before me. Now, after your brain fully, imp fully computes the implications of that sentence, you've got to say, well, that's not humanly possible. And you're absolutely right. The only way that John the Baptist's statement can be true is if the Lamb of God is God also. Now, we can be confident that the burden of our sin, the guilt of our sin, and the punishment for our sin has been completely removed from us because God himself has taken care of it. Now that's what the Lamb has done for us. So let's see what the Lamb says to us. Now John the Baptist's second identification of the Lamb of God comes in the presence of two of his disciples. These men would soon become disciples of Jesus. These men were specifically the apostles, John, and Andrew. Now when John and Andrew were told whom Jesus was, they immediately followed him. And please note, John the Baptist wasn't concerned about losing two of his disciples because, again, he knew that it wasn't all about him. When Jesus sees John and Andrew literally following him, he asks them, what do you want? Now here's where it gets interesting. John and Andrew asked Jesus, where are you staying? Now, I suppose they could have worded that phrase differently. John and Andrew could have just as easily asked Jesus, where can we find you? They might have even asked, how can we get in touch with you? But any way it comes out, John and Andrew expressed the desire to know more about Jesus and to know him better. But what's really interesting is Jesus' answer. Come and you will see. Now, that's simple enough, but look at what it doesn't say. Jesus didn't say, just read a bunch of books about me. He didn't say, come to church once in a while and you'll know about me. No, Jesus issues an order and a challenge to his would-be followers. Come, follow me. Jesus tells John and Andrew that if they wanted to know more about him, they had to go where he goes and do what he does. And therein lies our lesson. You can learn about Jesus by reading. You can learn about Jesus by coming to church. But if you really want to know Jesus, you have to get moving and follow him. Now, you have to go to the places where Jesus would go, and that means you have to go where the unbelievers are. You have to do the things that Jesus would do. That would be loving God first, our neighbor second, and ourselves last. And you have to say the things that Jesus would say. That means telling the world the truth about God's love for them and his plan of salvation for everyone. Because knowing Jesus means following Jesus. And following Jesus means more walk and less talk.
Now the last point that today's text makes that we can learn and grow from concerns one of the biggest problems that's causing the demise of many Christian churches today. This point deals with what Andrew did when he was convinced that Jesus was his Savior. Please listen while I reread verses 40 and 41. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing that Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah. Now, did you hear that? The first thing. Since that's the first thing that he did, Andrew didn't do a bunch of other things. Andrew didn't wait until he had his degree in theology. He didn't wait for just the right moment to bring the subject up. He didn't wait for Simon Peter to come to him and ask. He didn't wait until he finished all of the other things that he thought were more important. As soon as Andrew was sure that Jesus was the Messiah, he set out to tell somebody else. That's pure witness and evangelism at work. Andrew didn't care if he had all the answers. He knew that he had the only answer that mattered. Andrew didn't wait for just the right moment or for Peter to come to him because he knew that it was too important to wait. Now, Andrew demonstrated the three things that I mentioned just a moment ago talking about following Jesus. He loved God first by believing what Jesus had to say. He loved his neighbor second by wanting to share the good news of the gospel with his brother. And he loved himself last by putting God's mission and his neighbor's welfare ahead of his own. The lack of witness and evangelism is killing churches today. The reason that churches cease to grow is because the people in the church stop reaching out to the people outside of the church. The church has always prospered in only one way. Each one brings one. Now that's an old phrase, but it's just as effective today as it was when Andrew brought Peter. My friends, John the Baptist came into this world with a very special mission. The reason for John's existence was to point to Christ and announce to the world, look, it's the Lamb of God. Now, I hope that you can see how important John's mission was because it's your mission too. Amen. And now that peace of God that passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and life everlasting. Amen.